Hi, I'm Marika Broman Durning from My Creative Quilts, and I have a great weekend or even self isolation project for you if you're looking for something quick and easy. If you have a round table like I do in my kitchen, you may have trouble finding placemats that fit nicely. So, this is a quick and easy project for you that you can make beautiful placemats that fit your decor and fit your table. So, here we go. These are very basic instructions. If you want to get more detail with lots of photos, go to my website, mycreativequilts.com, and there's a blog post on how to make these. There's lots of photos and instructions. So this is what the finished project looks like. Uh, there's no binding on it yet, just because I'm showing you. But these are the placemats. I have four of them, and then I have my table topper for the middle. So now I'm gonna quickly show you how to do it. So let's pretend this is the square piece that you wanna use. When you're, you measure your table widthwise and you decide if you want to have your placemats and your tabletop covering the whole table or if you want to have table pieces of your table showing through. Some people with really big tables use a smaller um, center and placemats because when they're finished eating they push them all in the middle for a table topper. Some people want the whole table covered. My table is about 44 inches wide, so that was perfect for the width of fabric, cotton fabric that I buy for quilting. If you have a larger table and you want it all covered, you're going to have to sew together some pieces of fabric. Or you can do things like get creative with orphan blocks that you have left over from other projects, make a quilty top, whatever you want to do, it's up to you. The sky is the limit. Uh, for the backing, you can choose to use just a plain backing or you can choose a complementary or con contrasting type of fabric so that when you flip it over, you have two sets of placemats. It's entirely up to you. The only rule is it has to be square. So let's say this is our quilted square, okay? Pretend there's a backing and a batting on there. Uh, again, I go into more detail in the blog post, but I use 100% cotton batting for these because I don't want them to be too puffy. So you can quilt it any way you want. If you're new to machine quilting, this is a great way to learn how to practice. If you can do feathers, you can do doodles, do whatever you want. Uh, in the sample I just showed you, I just did a meandering around it because I wanted to get it done quickly. Again, entirely up to you. So let's say this is my finished top. We'll assume it's big enough to fit my table. Now that I've finished quilting it, I wanna measure it again because if you quilt very densely, it can shrink. It, it pulls together. So I'm just going to measure it again just to be sure I'm about square. So that's 22 inches this way and it's a little shy of 22 inches this way. So that's okay. That's good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're cutting it in a circle anyway. You can work from the top or you can work from the back. It's up to you. Uh, it, for me, the side I work on depends on how less busy the fabric is because it's easier to see the marking. So we're going to work from the back and pretend this is the backing. So the first thing you do is you fold your fabric in quarters or your, your quilted piece in quarters, okay? Because you're going to be cutting out your circle, you just have to do it once and you'll have your whole bit. Okay, so there's your center right there. You can mark it if you plan on opening it. If you, especially if you're doing a big one, you might have to open it and do it, half, do, do it halfway instead. Um, so you can mark it with a piece of thread or whatever you want to do. So then I measure again, because no matter how careful you are, one side is always going to be a little bit shorter than the other. So just measure, take your ruler or your measuring tape, and we are at, this is 11 inches on this end, and it's just shy of 11 inches here. So it's not quite even. So I'm going to go at 11, I'm going to go to... 10 and a half inches because I know that 10 and a half reaches here and 10 and a half will be here and it's going to be smooth. So I'm using a permanent marker to show you. Don't use this on your fabric. This is just so you can see it more clearly. So I have my measurement. I'm going to do 10 and a half and then I'm going to do 10 and a half. So now I know my lengths. So now I need to go in the middle. Now, there are a couple of ways you can do this. You can make a makeshift compass, which with a piece of string, you attach a piece of string to your center here and you tie it to your marker and you use it to make your circle. I just use a ruler, I find it easier. So I'm going to find my 10 and a half inch mark, which is right there. And I put it right smack and make sure it's right in the corner. Okay, make sure it's right there. And then you just mark it here. And then you very carefully just move your ruler 
along, making sure you stay on the 10 and a half inch mark because you want to make sure that you meet. And then you do the same thing on the other side. You just go along until you have enough marks to feel confident. And then you connect the dots. That's all you do. Okay, very roughly. Use a washable marker, do not use this. Okay, now comes the fun part. Now you cut it out using a good, because you have three layers, this is gonna be thick because there's gonna be um, four layers of backing, four layers of batting, and four layers of top. Okay, so make sure your scissors are really sharp. So then you just cut your circle. You can use a rotary cutter, but I find I, I just go all over the place. I can't control that when I'm cutting a circle. So, all right, we've cut our circle. And now we have the round top. Now what do we do? Now we have to make our donut. So we have our, temp our center, and then we have the outside to cut into placemats. So you do the same again. You cut, you put yourself, well, you don't unfold it to begin with, but I was just, so you have your quarters. Now you have to decide how, how high you want your placemats to be. So the one I just showed you, my placemats are 12 inches high. So again, this is all in miniature. So you decide how high you want your placemats to be. And we were, we're at 10 and a quarter, 10 and a half inches here. So we're fine. So let's say we wanted our placemats to be, I don't know, let's say five inches. Okay. So if we want it to be five inches, it's going to be five and a half inches from the top. So you mark again, five and a half inches here, five and a half inches here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, sometimes it's a, sometimes a little bit difficult with the ruler. I find this one that the numbers are backwards, so I I tend to mess up sometimes a little bit. And then you do the same thing. You're marking in the middle, okay? You keep it in the, and you, you start marking as you go along. You just go like this until you've done them all. And I'm going a little bit off course because I'm trying to hurry a little bit. And there we go. So then again, you connect your dots. Go like this, connect your dots. You cut out your circle. Again, don't use this marker on your project. I'm just doing it to show you. So now you have your center cut out, you have your middle, and you have your donut. So now you can cut your donut into your placemats. You fold your donut in half. Way. Cut it. Cut it. I'll fold these again. And cut it. And you have four placemats. Then you put the binding on it, and there you go. You have your project. Very simple, very quick, and it's fun to do. So I hope you like this tutorial. Like I said, go to my website, mycreativequilts.com, where you'll be able to see more pictures and a more in-depth explanation of how to do this. Have a good day.